Thank you so much, Psalm, for having me. Hearing these speeches and stories um, from everyone today has inspired me to kind of open up more about my own story, which I was struggling with throughout this journey. And it's a story that I carried a lot of shame with for so long because I felt that I didn't deserve to be here. See, I was, as you mentioned, Psalm, I was the valedictorian in college. I was the overachiever. I had everything laid out. I mean, just as other speakers shared, I was the person that had the perfect life. I had the partner. I had the grades. I had the internships. Yet I was one of the most depressed people that you would ever know. There were days that I looked in the mirror and I said how much I hated myself. And I would look at myself and I would say, God, you are such a waste of space. You, you're just such a disappointment. You said the wrong thing in that conversation with that person two weeks ago. And yet I'd carry that conversation on for weeks, reminding myself how stupid I was for saying or doing a certain thing a certain way. And I couldn't forgive myself. I couldn't let it go. I couldn't move forward. And I carried that pain throughout my college career. I mean, you look at me on the outside, you'd be like, this girl has it all. She is good to go. And I just was nervous breakdown after the next. There were days that I sat in my bed and prayed to God that I wouldn't wake up again. There were moments in my life that I just didn't care to do life anymore. So I know there are people here that are watching right now that know that feeling. It's that darkness. You're in that tunnel. You're screaming at the top of your lungs, but nobody can hear you. It's like being in a black hole and you are just clawing and screaming. And it's like people are just staring at you in the face and asking you how your day is. And you're telling them you're okay. When little do they realize you're nowhere near okay. You, you just want them to hear the voice that's screaming inside, yet the same words we always say, how are you? Good. You? Good. Every day I did that. That was who I was. Until one day I hit my breaking point. point. I hit my brick wall and I said, I cannot do this anymore. I went, I looked to God and I said, God, if I go through something else, I, I won't be able to make it. Either you need to take me or I cannot do this no anymore. And I remember the moment where I was overseas and I got a phone call that one of the people that I loved the most, my grandmother, had passed away. And when that moment happened, y'all, I don't know if y'all have seen the movies, you know how in the movies, all of a sudden the, the, the world goes silent, everything slows down. And that was my world. Everything slowed down. And all I could hear was this loud ringing inside. And I said, I cannot take this. And over those weeks, as I worked tirelessly to heal my partner supporting me in the process. Thank God I had him and that he put God put him in my life because I don't know what where I would be without that support, without that voice that I needed more than anything. But over the weeks and over the days, I prayed, I prayed, I talked to God. I, I read so many books. I found every Bible book I could read, every book on faith I could read. And I started to realize that I don't have to be Perfect. The, the broken version of me is all that God wanted me to accept all along, because in his eyes, I am perfect. In his eyes, we are perfect, despite the things that we've gone through, despite what we've done, despite what we felt about ourselves. We are perfect, perfectly imperfect in this world. And it took me so long to hear and understand that. And I began to find hope. That word that's just that powerful word that will change your life that we all just need as I began to find hope. And as I began to find hope, I began to grow my faith. I began to continue to, to walk in the journey. And I told God, I remember I used to pray on the floor and I told God, I said, God, I will do whatever you want me to do. Just let me live my purpose. Just let me use me. Use me. And so I eventually started my company, Project Passport, where I began to support the mental well-being of people in the world by providing all types of modalities coming together to support the mental wellness of people. And it was crazy. So before the pandemic hit, one of the most tragic things that you could ever experience hit my family. Let me take you to where I was. I got a phone call. It was a couple days before Christmas. My aunt calls me on the phone. She's saying, your brother's in the hospital. 
Mind you, I have a brother who's about his 20s, his early 20s, he's in college, doing fine, you know, being a boy, you know how that goes. And I get to the hospital to the, and we get, I'm thinking he just did something silly, maybe got hurt. I look in the hospital, the doctors look at me funny as I'm walking up to the room. I'm the first one there. I peek behind the hospital door and I see my brother babbling from the top of his lungs tied to the hospital bed. I'm over here helping the mental well-being of everybody else and trying to make this difference. And all of a sudden our world has stopped. Our world has frozen. My brother had experienced a psychotic break. My mom, my dad were in complete distraught. We had never experienced this before within our family. And I did not know where to start, but something in me, God rooted something in me to be able to say, I can go through this. I can push through this. I will push through this. And so I worked my butt off calling doctors, getting him because he was in the, he was in the emergency room. He couldn't even, he hadn't even gotten to a psychiatric facility. And so what I did was I called, I did my, I tapped into my resources. I did everything I could to support him throughout that journey. He even stayed with me for a few days and watching him suffer through this system. This is this broken system of mental health was one of the hardest things to do. The obstacles that it took to just get him in a psychiatric ward, the obstacles that it took to not have him drugged up to the point where he couldn't even barely say his name or barely even talk. It was the most traumatic journey to watch someone else experience. And Thank God I had the, the rooted power of the Lord in me to help support in this journey because my parents were absolutely distraught. So that moment, it was a wake up call for me once again, that this work that I do does not stop because it could be any of us. Any of us could have been in that psychiatric ward bed. It takes the right situation, the right moment, the right circumstances, and it can affect any one of us. All of us are on a given spectrum of mental health at any given time. You can end up in that space where you don't want to be here or that space where you were experiencing a psychotic break. Yet as people, we go through life like those people over there have those problems. But we are them and they are us. We are one. Yet we function as if we are separate in this society. And I saw that happen with my brother and I saw the separation of the treatment that he experienced. And I knew that this was a reminder of why my work can't stop. Later on in the pandemic, I had a dream. I remember it was a random night. I was struggling because everything changed. I was a travel retreat company and everything I had worked for was gone. I was in a negative balance, my business bank account. We owed money to clients because we had to refund them for trips, money that we didn't have. I felt helpless. I felt out of whack. I had just gone through this situation, my brother in the psychiatric ward, and now everything was changing within my business and my life and everybody else's life because we're all in the pandemic, right? So this dream I had, I remembered a woman came to me. She was a beautiful woman. And she looked at me and she said, Sabria, you can decide to, to go now or if you wanna stay, you can stay. So I'm sitting here like, and this is a true story. I'm sitting here like, am I crazy? Like, what, is, like, what do you mean? And in my heart, I knew she was the angel of death. In my heart, I knew. And so I looked at her and I said to her, I said, well, am I going to at least go to heaven? Because, you know, be, me being myself, of course, I was going to ask that question. I wanted to make sure if I'm going to go, I go somewhere I want to be. And she said to me, well, it looks like you are. So I'm over here thinking, hmm, maybe I need to take this chance while I can. But then she looked at me and she said, Sabria, there's still more for you to do here. It's your choice. And I looked at her and I said, you're right, I need to stay. There's, there's more work for me to do. And so I made the choice once again, out of the many times that I went through pain to choose life, I chose life again. And the crazy thing is, is a couple days later, I opened a book about someone else's story with experiences of faith and experiences with the divine. And she was approached by the same angel, the same woman that I was. And that brought chills to me because I knew that that was probably no dream. And had I said yes, I may not be here speaking with you all today. 
I want you all to understand that when it comes to providing tools to support one another, I am really a really big proponent of looking at ourselves as beings of purpose. Every single one of us have a space in this world, even if we don't know it yet. Everything that I've ever done in my life has fed into who I am today. It took every experience to build the Sabria that you see before you, and it will for the person that you are as well. One thing I want you to understand is that you have to remember to keep your heart on your values. Your values will serve as your compass. It will serve as your guide. They will serve as your, your support system through life. Through all this chaos, through everything going on, you have core values to who you are, whether it's faith, empathy, creativity, humor, all of these things make up who you are and they are, they're static and only change if you choose to change them. So I really, really ask that if you are struggling, if you are struggling to find a space in this world, if you are struggling to find a place and you may not know your purpose, at least know your values. Know that you have things that matter to you and that they will keep you towards your North Star. Just like, just like whenever the baby Jesus, when the three kings went to go find baby Jesus, what do they say? What are the what directions do they need to find them, right? And they said, follow the North Star. Your values are your North Star. So I compel you to continue to follow your values throughout the process. Another thing that I want you to, be, to understand that it's important, I love this model, it's a positive psychology model, it's called PERMA. P-E-R-M-A. P is you have to check yourself. Are you in a positive mindset this day? Are you in a positive mindset? There are times that before I have to speak or do something, I'm like, woo, yes, yes, woo. <laughs> because I'm already cheering because I've already won. It's already done. I'm celebrating a success before it's already happened. I tell you to look at engagement. Are you engaged with the world? Are you connected to the world around you? Are you enjoying that chocolate chip cookie? E for engagement. Are you enjoying that conversation with a loved one? Are you enjoying that, that moment that you're just out on the water? Engage with your life, engage with your values. R for relationships. Make sure that you continue to tap into those relationships around you. We need each other. When God was making the world, he did not just say, Hey, sending you out there, Adam. Um, good luck. God said, man is not meant to be alone. It's not going to work. We're going to have to add somebody else here. And so he brought Adam or he brought Eve to support Adam. God has brought people here to support you in this world. We're not here to do this alone. M for meaning. During the Holocaust, Viktor Frankl, he wrote a book about how even though these people, the Jews and all the people that were being tortured knew their lives were going to end, they knew they still chose roles. They still chose careers within that, those facilities that allowed them to support the lives of others. They still chose those things. That says a lot. We need meaning more than anything. It is part of the, it is the core of why we breathe. So continue to search for meaning. Just because you haven't found it yet doesn't mean it's not there because we all have a space in this world. And A, finally, A for achievements. Oh my gosh, big and small, celebrate. Lisa Nichols said in a speech, sometimes your 70% is someone's 100%. You don't think your stuff is nothing, baby, but your stuff is something that is inspiring somebody else. Your first stepping stone is someone and your next step, you're looking back and you have to pull other people up. So you celebrate. You be proud of the things that you've accomplished, big and small. If you walk about the bed this morning, that counts. And as I wrap up, I want you to know that you, we all have a dash in between when we start this life and when we end this life. What will you do in that dash? Because bottom line, if Satan's not bothering you, just like Joyce Meyer says, you're not bothering him. So you got work to do, baby, because you want to bother Satan real good. When things are getting hard, you know that means something beautiful is coming to you. Because every time, every time it, it never fails for me when the darkest storm is in my way, the beautiful sun is parting behind the clouds because Satan, he's getting real upset. Wow. Wow. Dabria, this is amazing. Thanks. You said something beautiful is coming. Something beautiful is coming my way and i believe for everyone that is watching right now 
there is so much beautiful things in the pipeline that is coming your way because uh, there is season for as much as you live here, as, uh, as she really said, she said, we are in the university of life. We are living in this university. We are studying. Every day we are learning. And that's why Ashimini said something. She said, you unlearn to learn. And as uh, you said, you said, engage with your values. There is so much values within that every young people should learn how to engage them, the time to use. Look at